going on? Got a video from men only. Let's get into it. I ended up on the wrong side of TikTok the other day because my video about how bad it is dating as a woman in Australia went viral, except... Fellas, welcome back to the channel. Today, we're diving into a topic that's sparking a lot of debate. Modern women are fuming because men are going their own way. Man, I remember her face. I've seen her in another video. She wasn't looking great at all. We'll take a look at why more men are choosing this path, the reactions from women, and what it means for the future of relationships. If you're ready to explore this growing trend, make sure you're subscribed and have notifications turned on. Let's get started. Honestly, too many women come on this app, watch one she or seven sprinkle sprinkle video, and then and decide that they're deserving of princess treatment. Talk to and them. yet have no class, no grace, no gratitude, no etiquette, no manners, no career prospects, no job, no long-term <laughs> goals, no practical skills, no hobbies, no interest, and honestly, nothing worth investing in. So basically a bum, like these men have been telling them they are. You're a bum, no matter how many times you say that you deserve princess treatment. We can see your works. Get out of our face. I'm not spending money on you. You can't be selfish, unkind, and cruel to both men and other women and then expect everyone to hand life to you on a silver platter. Exactly. That's not the way that it works. So let me raise this question. Are your standards high or are you just an entitled brat? The latter. The reason I bring this up is because somebody just told me in my comment section that my fiance doesn't do enough for me despite <laughs> him funding about 90% of my life. I stood up for him and got called a c which honestly <laughs> is good and fine because I would rather be a c than be a loser. They don't want you to be happy. So many women today demand princess treatment, but let's be real. What do they bring to the table? They want to be treated like royalty, yet they lack the very qualities that would make them worthy of such treatment. No manners, no gratitude, no etiquette, no class, no grace. Wow. They don't have jobs, long-term goals, practical skills, hobbies, interests, or any real career prospects. For defending a dude that's yours, instead of saying congratulations, you call her that. Man, goodness. When you break it down, what's left? Entitlement. They're just entitled brats who expect everything without giving anything in return. These women don't even hold themselves to the standards they expect from men. They want a man to be successful, driven, and accomplished, but they haven't done the work to develop those qualities in themselves. Exactly. They're so focused on seeking validation from a man that they forget the most important part, becoming a person who is actually worth investing in. The truth is, if you want to attract the best qualities in a person, you must first become a person with the best qualities. You can't demand respect, admiration, and dedication if you haven't cultivated those attributes in yourself. <laughs> it's not about entitlement. It's about self-improvement and growth. But instead, these women rely on their looks or a sense of entitlement to get what they want exactly. without putting in the effort to develop themselves as individuals. They're stuck in this mindset that they deserve everything just because they exist without realizing that real relationships, real connections, are built on mutual respect, shared values, and complementary qualities. Somewhere along the way, society has taught our women that they don't have to respect men. But yet and still, a man is supposed to love them through all of that? Which one of you guys are taking that deal? So, while they're waiting for that prince to come along and sweep them off their feet, they're missing the point entirely. The men who are worth having are looking for more than just a pretty face. They want a partner who has something to offer, someone who's worked on herself, who has goals, passions, and a sense of purpose. If you want the best, you have to be the best. That's the reality. But until these women understand that, they're going to keep finding themselves disappointed and unfulfilled, wondering why the princess treatment they think they deserve is always out of reach. So I'm going through a breakup right now, and the way that I cope through breakups is probably a little different from how you cope. So <laughs> apparently it doesn't include minding your business and being quiet, telling friends and family offline. It includes you spreading your business. But go ahead. Oh, my heart hurts. It's heavy. It sucks. I miss him. But I'm thinking right now, like, nothing can be worse than my high school relationship. Like, no breakup can be as bad as the number of breakups that I had with this one specific person from high school. Let me give you a story, okay? 
I was driving in the car down the freeway with my ex-boyfriend from high school. We were arguing in the car, bickering, probably yelling at each other when he pulls off the freeway and goes on to like a mountain and he stops the car and he says, get the fuck the car. And I was like, no, <laughs> no, you're joking. He says, get the fuck of my car. I'm serious. Aubrey, get the fuck. And I was like, N no, there's mountain lions, bobcats, scorpions, so many creatures. What do you mean? Get out of your car. What Didn't am I going to do? Quiet. He's like, you know, walk home, get out. And I was like, what do you mean? I'm going to walk home. What do you, what do you, what are you saying? And so he literally gets out of the driver's seat, walks over to the passenger seat, opens the door and says, if you don't get the for the car, I'm going to drag your ass to the car. And I was like, immediately waterworks. I was freaking out. I was like, oh my that's harsh. But at some point in time, unfortunately, you have to understand in this situation where you're in a potential, a huge amount of danger, potentially. Do I co-sign that? No. But you have to understand at some point in time, your words have consequences. Be quiet. At some point in time, just stop talking. Quit. You wouldn't be in this position if you learned to just be quiet. Oh my God, what am I going to do? I'm 20 miles away from home. Like I can't, I can't even walk. I'm like, that's impossible. Like, I don't even have the right shoes. Like, I'm freaking out. Like, my parents don't even know I'm supposed to be out. I don't think I said any of those things, but for comedic effect, you get it. Right. I'm just freaking out, crying. Like, please just take me home, okay? And this mother felt so bad for me because I was crying. And I think he logistically was like, yeah, you know what? I, th I think I could get in a lot of trouble for leaving her here. And then he, um, he drove me home. So I just don't think the breakup that I'm going through right now is as bad as that. And I'm Did really you learn your that. lesson? Here's the thing. There are always two sides to every story. A man isn't just going to send a woman out of his car for no reason. Something must have happened. Something she did or said that hit a nerve and pushed him over the edge. Women often go in and out of relationships yep. like they're deciding what to have for dinner, treating them as casual and disposable. It's like they're going out for sushi just another experience, nothing too serious. Meanwhile, most men are left thinking, what the heck is a relationship even supposed to be anymore? For some men, dating and relationships have become unappealing, no not boundaries. because they don't want companionship, but because they're tired of the drama, Always the roller coasters, the belt. and the chaos that comes with it. They've had enough of the games, the emotional ups and downs, and the constant uncertainty. Women say they want stability and commitment, but their actions often speak differently. They chase after excitement, drama, and those fleeting moments of thrill, leaving men wondering where the peace and simplicity have gone. Men value peace. It's something they prioritize, and rightly so. But it seems like, for many women, peace is secondary to the roller coaster ride of emotions and drama. So, when a man finally reaches his breaking point and decides to cut ties, it's not out of nowhere. It's a reaction to the constant turmoil he's been put through. The blame isn't on him for wanting out. It's on the woman who pushed him to that point, who treated the relationship as something disposable rather than something worth nurturing. If women want to hold on to good men, they need to stop treating relationships like a revolving door and start valuing the peace and stability that men bring into their lives. It's time to stop blaming men for walking away and start looking at the behavior that's driving them to prioritize their peace over the chaos that so many women seem to break. <laughs> exactly. The bottom line is this. Men are tired of the roller coaster. They want peace, and they're not going to stick around in a relationship where that peace is constantly under threat. If women can't understand that, then they're going to keep finding themselves alone and wondering why things didn't work out. So this young lady is going viral because she's saying the dating sucks. Now, this is what happened. She was seeing a guy for two or three weeks, and she said he was very attentive, he was good to her, he was a nice guy, had a great personality, she was really into him, and they were supposed to be going to the movies. And basically, he blocked her and ghosted her completely. Blocked her on social media, blocked her phone calls, he blocked her on everything. Dang. And she seems to be very hurt and confused by the situation and what's happening. Now, I'm going to tell right. you something. Whenever I see social media posts like this, one of the things that I always keep in mind is we're only hearing one side of the story. That's right. We're only hearing one side of the story. But let me tell you two reasons why a man would ghost a woman like this after treating her so well, after them having a really good time together for the past two or three weeks. Let me tell you, there are only two reasons. Chilling with other dudes. Reason number one is because this man has options and she didn't make the cut. 
He looked at all of the women that he had available to him, all of the options on the table, and he said, you're not making the cut. I'm sorry. Number two. I wouldn't have even ghosted because of that. I would just let her know I'm not interested in moving forward. I think we're going on two different paths. She has aggravated the hell of this man. And he's like, bro, I can't take it. Like, I've done my best. I've tried to be nice. I've tried <laughs> to be cool. But she is an aggravating human being. And I can't spend another day, second, minute with her. It's two reasons. You guys let me know what you think in the comments. Reason number three, he probably found out about her history with other dudes and decided, nah, I'm good. Or She's maybe she wasn't TikTok. willing to give it up. And he wasn't about to waste any more time on someone who wasn't reciprocating his effort. The bar is so low. You basically just have to have a somewhat decent haircut, go to a good bar, a good bar which is, I guarantee, less expensive than a girl's haircut. Um, but anyways, you basically, all you need is a good haircut, a good pair of shoes, like get some nice shoes. Just as long as you're not wearing socks with sandals or chunky, chunky black running shoes, like dad shoes, like you're good. Get a nice pair of pants, a nice loose fit or a nice slim fit, but not a no fit. <sighs> or get a pair of shorts that end above your knee and get a nice oversized shirt. Maybe I wonder if these types of women ever listen to themselves talk. Do they actually enjoy hearing themselves? Most men are not going to enjoy this. You can just be quiet. Nobody's listening to you. This is some Lulu joggers. It, there's like seven items and you have an attractive wardrobe. Last thing you need, which maybe is less of something you can buy, a bit of a sense of humor and some confidence. Right. Literally, stand with your shoulders back, hold a door for a woman. Thanks. It is so easy to be attractive, guys. I feel like the bar is in hell and we're playing limbo. And and for girls, and this is no hate to guys, but you know, there's makeup, there's hair, there's body, there's so many things. Um and that can make I'm not you trying attractive. to be sexist here. I just feel like it's so easy for guys and I I don't think enough guys get that positive encouragement of like, hey, no, you you don't think you can be attractive, you can be attractive. Like make those easy changes and you'll get there. When she talks about the guys she's interested in, let's be honest. She's picturing someone like Henry Cavill, not your average Joe. She's got this fantasy in her head of the perfect guy. Tall, handsome, successful, probably with a six-pack and a jawline that could cut glass. <laughs> Meanwhile, the reality is that most men don't fit that mold. But here's... I was wondering when they say, can cut glass. <laughs> Why would you want a jawline like that? <laughs> the kicker, those average Joes, the ones who don't have movie star looks or millions in the bank, they're not even on her radar. She's not thinking about shorter guys or poorer guys when she talks about what she wants in a man. Still alone. I don't need men to protect me. I'm sorry. Actually, you do need men to protect you. Really? From who? Other men? So How many times I've protected protect you. myself? You, still need men. you need them to protect you. I don't you need you guys to protect Can me. Can you stop interrupting? Talk. Hey, I'm done. You, so, two things. First, you absolutely do need men to protect you. This may be by proxy, either through the military or through law police. enforcement officers. I'm the assuming police. if somebody you know were Stupid. to be murdered, you would not just protect yourself. You would not investigate it yourself. You would appeal to who? Primarily men. I men. would appeal to law enforcement as a whole, not not to specifically the, men in law enforcement. Which is and to be quite honest men. with you, if I need protection, if I own a gun, I don't need your, your muscles. I'm actually, I, I can handle sure. it. Here's Are the you thing. Insane? I need tools. Wait, I don't I need know. men. If, if that's what you own. Stupid. We're talking about who is overwhelmingly in law enforcement and these other hard jobs. It's going to be men. Stop doing these mental gymnastics to try to not lose a point just own up to what it is and say yeah we do need assistance i need tools and men hoard all the tools and resources so i have to ask you guys for those okay, tools so this is up. exactly so what you need men. protected women sound like in the states she talks about needing protection but doesn't seem to realize she hasn't done anything to deserve it men have made women so comfortable and safe that they don't even recognize their need for us anymore women like this are completely delusional the reality is, without men, women wouldn't survive. Men have built and maintained the very infrastructure that allows women to live the comfortable lives they enjoy today. It's ironic, really. She's so confused, blaming men for handing her the tools she claims to need but can easily purchase. Stupid. It's like all her problems somehow trace back to men in her mind. This is the thinking of a deranged, 
deluded narcissist, someone who can't see beyond their own skewed Even worldview. Andrew's confused. These feminists have become insufferable with their twisted logic. Take her argument about needing tools, for instance. She says men hoard or keep the tools she needs, which is absurd. By that logic, she still needs men just to be able to use those tools. Exactly. The whole thing just goes in circles and proves how irrational her thinking is. It's almost laughable, but also sad, because it shows how out of touch she is with reality. In the end, she's just proving that she's a tool herself. I ended up on the wrong side of TikTok the other day because my video about how bad it is dating as a woman in Australia went viral, except hundreds and hundreds of incels and just gross guys started calling me a 3 out of 10 and just being so mean in the comments. Really need the girlies to come in like Gandalf at the back. Well... I mean... Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, and apparently they ain't beholding much beauty. Battle of Helm's Deep on that video in the comments. Just help a sister out because this is really demoralizing. <laughs> no. This video is for the TikTok algorithm to connect me with like-minded girlies. No, sis. I remember her. I remember her acting a fool in the store. I think she was working at a convenience store. And a guy came in respectful. Maybe I'll find the video one of these days. He came in respectful. He said, hey, can I have your number? She was with her co-workers, two or three, a couple of them, standing right there. Hey, can I have your number? No, thank you. Or I think she said, actually, I have a boyfriend. Oh, okay, have a good day. He literally said, have a good day and walked off. She then turns to her camera, looks down because she's recording, because I guess he came in and he was interested in her. And he didn't really say too much, but he gave an indication that he was interested. Then he walked out. I guess he got some gas or walked around the store, whatever it was. Then came back and said, hey, I would like your number or can I have your number? No, thanks. I've got a boyfriend. OK, have a good day. She starts laughing, looking at the other uh, uh, her other co-workers. And the dude was right there, actually a co-worker. And instead of him saying, man, that was really respectful. Respect him. They, they all were making fun of him. And she posted out on TikTok. Stupid. That's what you get. You don't need anybody to check in. You need to be humbled. You need to be humbled. There was no reason for you to do that man like that. He was very respectful, said what he said, walked out. But then you want to make some stupid. I think the last thing that she said was, this is why we don't feel safe. This is why you don't feel safe. Because a man comes in respectfully, tries to ask you for your number. You say no. He respects that you said no. Didn't even try to say, are, are you sure? Can I have a social media? None of that. The man literally said, OK, have a good day and walked out. You're delusional, ma'am. You're crazy. Get off the Internet. You're getting what you get. So I'm just going to say a bunch of stuff that I like. Sabrina Carpenter, Chapel Road, Taylor Swift, Swifties, I know you can do this. Charlie XCX, Billie Eilish, Akatar, Feyre Resan, Throne of Glass, Selena. I'm currently reading Throne of Glass, by the way, and it's literally so good. These words better fuck. It's really insane to see women like her convincing themselves that they're a 10 when, in reality, they're barely a 3. Okay. Do women even understand what makes someone a 10? The truth is, some of them have no idea. They think it's all about beauty, but being a 10 goes far beyond just looks. Trash it's about attitude. embodying traditional values having character, and being someone of substance. Mary. I think I met my first real sassy man last night. He was handsome, he was just fine. He had a nice beard, real chopped, dark skin, real dress, nice put together. He was trying to call me over. And bitch, me, I'm playing hard to get because all the niggas were just trying to get me. So everybody grabs my arm and they're like, hey, he want to talk to you. So I go over and I start talking to him and he like, so what took you so long to come over here? And I said, I had to think about it. Mind you, it was another nigga in the other, on the other corner that I was talking to too, but I was just trying to see what was up. I'm just, you know, and he was like, Oh, so you was trying to you was trying to make a decision and i was mm. like yeah he was like all right don't worry about it then you can go ahead and have a good night yes sir okay nigga. Right, the fuck? i got options what's the problem you nothing be, I, I, never mind i'm not even gonna go there Another woman calling a man sassy so let's explain the situation wait a minute she was about to say <laughs> she was about to basically incriminate herself in what men i've been telling these women these relationships are transactional and you're acting like one of those women that be out late at night. That's what you was about to say. You got to pay for something. In order for you to get this, you got to pay to play. And that man saw where you was coming from. 
He said, don't worry about it. <laughs> He's by the women so dumb. They're dumb. They're stupid. Trust my audience that they were able to comprehend her video. I'm going to go through it anyways. The girl was at some kind of event. I don't know if it was a singles event or if it was just like a bar, a club, whatever. You know, she was at a place. And that was attractive. You know, that was eyeing her down and she was eyeing him down. But she was, you know, feeling the room because apparently everybody in this room wanted this, wanted this woman. I'm not really too sure where this was. Okay, but let's listen. Let's not go there. I guess she's trying to like feel out her options and the guy can visibly see that she's like talking to a bunch of other men. So then finally, when she does come over there, he's like, oh, what took you so long? We've been making eye contact this whole time. And then she like blatantly kind of implies like, oh, I was trying to feel out all the other guys. I get to before you. I came over to you. The guy politely says to her, oh, OK, then you're, you're fine. You're continue on. And then she it. goes, oh, oh, <laughs> this man sassy has respect for himself and didn't take the subtle comment of me basically implying that I was testing out other options because exactly. I didn't think he was good enough to settle for. I didn't want to accept that. So this man's sassy. I have so many options. I'm in my <laughs> 30s and still dating, but I have so many options. I have so many options. I'm, I'm just putting this out there. Why aren't these very, you know, attractive, wealthy, you know, good looking men? Why don't, why aren't you dating one of them? Why aren't you dating them? If you have so many options, then why aren't you dating them? Is it more than likely because the options that you have are low quality options? They're men that you do not want to be with. Exactly. That is 99% of the time what a girl means when they're like, I got options. I got hit on by like seven homeless guys. Today, 70 okay? guys. So many options. And I don't want to even harp on that too much. But in my opinion, this guy literally was very respectful. Yep. He said, oh, okay, you, you want to go test out your options? Go. Like, I, he wants somebody to like look at him and be like, oh, that's that's a good option. Just go, like oh, women that do. Guy's good, but let me go and uh, fill out my other options here. To you, if the roles were reversed and then a guy came in this app and was like, yeah, this chick like saw me hitting on a bunch of girls, and then I finally walked <laughs> up to her because you know why not, you know? And uh, she was like, oh, you're a piece of trash. Like, well, I was you know trying to get the other girls first, but you know my guess, I'll be with you. What girl in their right mind would be like? Oh, you know, he was, no, that's, that's fine. None. He probably has so many options. None. Well, my favorite part is the ending where she's like, oh, I don't, I don't care. I know I thought about this so much. I went home, got my phone out and made a TikTok video <laughs> of it. But, you know, I don't, that's, I, don't I don't care. even care. So many don't options. Bother me. Listen, I can assure you that uh, somebody who makes TikTok videos about something, as somebody who does, slightly cares a little bit. Okay. They care <laughs> a little bit. You know, this guy sat on her mind for the rest of the night. And then you... she went home and was like, who does this guy think he is <laughs> denying me? Listen, I, at the end of the day, she should be fine because she has so many options. So many. I'm sure, you know, in the next week or two, she'll probably be dating somebody or more than up. likely she'll probably still not be dating somebody because all of those options weren't good ones. Exactly. Hey, what do you think? It's interesting how women love to reserve the right to be the ones doing the rejecting. They want to be in control of the situation making the final call. But when things don't go their way, they're quick to label you as sassy or something else to dismiss your decision. Shame, insults, guilt, and the need to be right. That's really all this is. A bunch of foolishness, somebody talking, you need to go clean that makeup off your face, go to bed. Take a shower, go to bed. You'll forget that loss in the morning. That's what you're telling men to do. Accept reject rejection and accept it gracefully. Shut up and take the L. That's all you're required to do. <laughs> but thanks to men only for the video. Uh, go subscribe. Go check out the channel. Um, all of that is just my opinion, my commentary. I'll see you in the next video. I'm out.